Hi everyone, I'm Adam Del Monte and welcome to my second video blog. Um, so today I'd like to talk about the comprehensive flamenco scale. And uh, you may ask, what is the, per the comprehensive flamenco scale? It's kind of a very dry name for it. Uh, but I believe that the comprehensive flamenco scale uh, is made up of nine notes. Usually a major or a minor scale is made up of seven notes, right? C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the octave repeats. Uh, same with the minor scale. Let's take the a harmonic minor, for example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the octave repeats. But the flamenco scale, uh, I believe, is more complex than just seven notes for the reason that it is a composite of several different modes uh, that has to accommodate different cultures. And at the same time, it has to work with a partially Western functioning harmony. So I know that I kind of threw out a bunch of big words out there, but I'll explain everything. So let's start with the most basic part and fundamental part of the flamenco scale, and that would be the Phrygian mode. Phrygian mode, without getting, getting into too much uh, theoretical detail, is basically all the notes played from E to E without any sharps or flats. So that would be... Right? Phrygian mode. Um, the harmonic minor goes like this. We're going to do it in A minor. Right? However, if we begin the harmonic minor on the fifth degree, in other words, one, two, three, four, five, here is the fifth degree of E, would be the fifth degree of A harmonic minor. And if we play a harmonic minor starting on the fifth degree, we're going to get this scale. Okay, so a second ago I played the Phrygian scale, which is G natural. The a harmonic minor on the fifth degree skips the G and goes straight to G sharp. Now let's take a, a bit of a left turn and look at the fundamental four chords that comprise the harmonic pillar of most of flamenco. Let's say about 80% of the flamenco styles are in this particular mode. People out of laziness or shorthand just call it Phrygian, but it's, again, as I'm explaining here, a little bit more involved than that. So the four main chords uh, that right away tell us we're in Spain, paella is served, flamenco is about to happen, and so is a party. Those are the four chords. Right? As soon as we hear that, right away we see bullfights and blood everywhere. All right. So, uh, this is cadence. is known as the Andalusian cadence. Now, uh, in this exact variation, it is the Andalusian cadence because it has the complete harmony that uh, gives the complete color of, of the full cadence. Uh, just if you take away the harmony and you just take this mode, right, the Phrygian mode, there are so many other cultures that use this mode. I can't even begin to explain. Indian, Persian, Armenian, Greek. Uh, Jewish, Arabic, right? But when it comes together in this particular order and with this exact harmony, uh, it becomes the Andalusian cadence. Now, Spain, because geographically and historically it was at a crossroads and it was a meeting point between the Middle East and the West. So both sociopolitically and uh, historically and culturally, also musically. Uh, the music always represents and reflects the cu culture 
simple or complex uh, at any given time in history. And this particular scale truly reflects the amalgamation of cultures that both uh, passed through Spain and left their imprint in it. And of course, in the deepest part of the DNA of flamenco, you can find strands of so many different cultures. So um, let's examine the Andalusian cadence from uh, another point of view. Uh, in jazz, for example, um, there is an exercise that basically says, in order to know a scale really well, you have to take out the uh, chord harmony out of the scale. The scale gives you the harmony. Uh, all the diatonic chords that belong to the scale, uh, the scale gives you those chords. So for example, if you're playing C major, right? And you start harmonizing every degree of the C major scale, this would be the first degree, the second degree, which is a major chord. The second degree is D, which again, harmonized using only the natural notes of the C major scale would give you D minor, right? The third degree, which is what interests us, but here there'll be a twist in a minute. The third degree is E, and if you again harmonize E only with the diatonic notes of C major, you get E minor. The fourth degree is F major, F major seven in this case. The fifth degree is G. If you add the seventh, it's a dominant seventh. Then A minor, A minor seven, if you will. Then B diminished, or half diminished as well. And then back to C major. So, if we take this scale, now the Phrygian scale comes out of the C major scale, like we said. This is the first mode, the Ionian. The second mode coming out of the C major scale is Dorian. It's a minor scale, right? The third mode coming out of C major, naturally, no sharps and flats, is the Phrygian mode. Now, the harmonization of that mode would be an E minor chord, right? However, here the mystery begins. Here the mutation, if, it, if you will, begins. Because if we were to harmonize the Phrygian mode in its purest sense, um, using the Andalusian cadence, right? We would get something like this. E minor because there is no G sharp in the Phrygian mode, right? So I can't remember the last time I heard somebody play Solea like this. Right, that's bizarre. Or that sounds totally off, right? Because the Andalusian cadence is... So now that opens up the scale by one extra note, which makes all the difference. E, F, G, G sharp, A, B, C, D, D, E. Wonderful. However, I'm not satisfied. I'll tell you why. Let's look at it from another perspective. We have uh, in the four chords of the Andalusian cadence, we have these four chords, right? A minor, G major, F major. Now, again, there can always be different extensions. You can have a straight F major. You can have a kind of a spicier F major, if you will, with a sharp 11. Oh, that open B, it's still diatonic. It's still made up of the natural notes of the Phrygian mode. have the opening on top right but then when you get to E it has to be major now between those four chords there's one relationship that really marks the tone and 
opens a, a sort of a window and gives us a cue into what's going on. The relationship between E major or E major with a flat nine, which can also be turned into a dominant, an E7. And by the way, the D is part of the natural scale of the Phrygian mode. Not the G sharp, of course, but the D is. This chord, E7, or even E normal, straight, wants to resolve to A minor. So the relationship between E major or E7, let's call it 7, let's use 7, the dominant. That relationship is a dominant tonic relationship, or a 5-1, fifth degree of A minor to A minor. So A minor is known as the tonic in this case scenario, and E is the dominant. In other words, dominant chords always uh, is like a question and beckons resolution. They're not stable, right? Tonics, on the other hand, are first base, home base, stable, resolve, answer. That is the answer. Question, answer. Okay. So, be because we have this relationship between 5 and 1, in A minor, and A harmonic minor, the key, the scale was, remember? Right? The G sharp serves as a leading note to the A minor. In C major, which is the relative major of A minor, you also have a leading note. Right? A leading note is characterized by being a half step below the tonic. The fact that it's a half step below the tonic creates that tension that question, that desire for resolution. Right? Wonderful. Okay, so how does this relate to flamenco? Because, as you know, in classical music, this would be a tonic and this would be the home base of the composition. But in flamenco, Happening. Even though I'm starting in A minor, musically, I'm resolving all the tensions into E major, or E with a flat 9, or whatever you want to call it, into E. So E, even though according to Western theory, is the dominant chord that goes to A minor. It acts and behaves like a tonic when you play flamenco. Here's your tension. So this chord, the F chord, especially with that wonderful crunch of the sharp 11, the open B against the, the F, In terms of voice leading and tension resolution, it wants to go to E. So, in this case, we see that E, when in flamenco, behaves like a tonic now, right? Because the tonic, we said, we established that that is the feeling of home base. So, when you play flamenco and you're doing... to E, it feels resolved in home base, right? So, because E acts like a tonic, feels like a tonic, behaves like a tonic, he deserves something special. What does he deserve? A leading note. What's a half a step below E? D sharp. So now, the full scale looks something like this. Remember I said I promised you nine notes per scale? That's a great deal. It's a bargain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we have the Phrygian. The beginning is the Phrygian. Then we have the G sharp extra from the A harmonic minor. Then we have A, B, C, D, D sharp, leading note, and back to E, to the octave. All right, so now, because we have two extra notes, 
that really spice up the scale, um, it really opens up a tremendous amount of harmonic and melodic possibilities and opportunities for both improvisation and composition, so that it doesn't just stay in a very limited modal form, right? Um, although it is kind of a mode, but it's an extended mode with a lot of open windows. So uh, in the next video, I will talk about the harmonies that uh, come out of this, that, that you can create out of this very complex scale. So what I would recommend is to play this scale all over the fingerboard from any direction, in any direction, at any point. So unlike in jazz, where you have to learn a billion scales, we only have to learn a few, uh, maybe five or six, right, to be safe. And then it was, I mean, the more the better. But uh, if you learn the flamenco, the comprehensive flamenco scale in all the flamenco tonalities, and again, that's a subject for another video, uh, then it's not too bad, right? So what we're going to do is only focus on E, which in flamenco lingo we call por arriba, right? Uh, it's not E major. It's not E Phrygian. So it's... Por arriba. That's the name they gave it. That's we. Ha that's the name we have to use. So, a, a great way to uh, internalize this scale is just to play it all over the all over the uh, fingerboard. So first, start with the first position. Forgot the D sharp there. skip certain notes so that you kind of get creative with it and have fun with it. Just go anywhere. Uh, the way I kind of like to, an image I like to share with people uh, in terms of how to learn a scale, imagine you're playing hopscotch and there's only a few places, uh, spots where you can step, right? So the same here. It's like playing hot scotch. Memorize the places where it is, and just that's all, that's the only place you're allowed to to set foot on or set finger on in this case. Then take the whole thing into the next position. So write it out if you have to, or just start with the first position and then just try and find every single note. You have to memorize and learn the notes. E, F, G, G sharp, right? A, B, C, D, D sharp. So it's really all the natural notes of, of uh, E Phrygian or C major, and just you add two notes, G sharp and D sharp. So practice this, have fun with it, knock yourself out, and uh, look out for the next video. We'll talk some harmony. In the meantime, please, if you like this video, click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Join me on Patreon if you want. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, stay healthy, wash your hands, and especially under your nails. <laughs>